Hello, in this video we'll add some obstacles for our runner game. Let's create a new blueprint actor with the name bp underscore obstacle. And let's create a new child blueprint for our obstacle actor with the name bp obstacle blocker. And another child actor with the name bp obstacle low. Now we need to open our obstacle actor and add a static mesh component here. And we need to open obstacle blocker actor and set some static mesh here. A cube mesh is good enough for now. Now let's change its scale to 2 for Y, 2 for Z and 0.6 for X. And we need to move it up by 100. Now let's open obstacle low actor and set the cube mesh here as well. And let's set its scale to 0.6 for x, 2 for y and 0.8 for z values. And we need to move it up by 40. Now we have our basic obstacles. The next thing we need is to spawn these obstacles. But first we need to find a place where we can spawn our obstacles. Let's open our floor tile actor and create a new function with the name init spawn points. We will make spawn points along three lanes we set for our run character. We can copy a lane position variable from run character actor to our floor tile actor. Now we have the same lane positions values here. Now we need to create a new variable with the name spawn points. And we need to set its type to a transform array. Let's get our lane positions variable and connect it to a for each loop node. We needed to create spawn points along each lane. And we need to create a new for loop node and set its last index to 4, because we need to create 5 spawn points along a particular lane. Let's add a new make vector node to set a position for our spawn points. We need to set an array element from lane positions loop as y value for our vector. And we need to get an index from our for loop, multiply it and set as x value. The length of our floor tile is 1000 and we need 5 spawn points along each lane on a floor tile. So we need 200 units distance between spawn points. Let's set this value for our multiply node here. Now we need make transform node. Let's set our vector as location. Also, we need to add add arrow component node. Let's set a relative transform for this component and let's connect it to our loop. Now we need to open construction script for our floor tile and we need to execute our init spawn points function here. Now we can see our spawn points in a viewport. And the last thing here. We need to store these four transform positions into our spawn points array.
Now we can spawn our obstacles. Let's create a new spawn obstacles function for our floor tile actor. We need to add a new for loop node and connect its last index to random integer in range. Let's set the max value in this range as 2. In this case we'll spawn from 1 to 3 obstacles on each floor tile. We need to use add child actor component and set its child actor class value as obstacle blocker. And we can create another add child actor component node and set its child actor class value as obstacle low. Now we need to add switch on int node and add two pins for each obstacle. And we need to connect its selection input to a new random integer in range node with one as a max value. In this case we'll spawn a random obstacle in this range. Now let's get a spawn points variable and promote it to a local variable with the name random spawn points. And we need to shuffle this new array. And finally, we can get this random spawn points array and get a transform reference for each obstacle. Also, we need to convert this word transform to a relative transform by using make relative transform node. And let's make it relative to actor transform. We need to connect this transform to relative transform input of our add child actor component nodes. Now we need to execute this function in a construction script. Let's open a viewport here and we can see our random obstacles. Let's play the game. Now we have some obstacles on our way. Let's make a few adjustments. As you can see, the player is running very slow. Let's increase its speed. We need to open our run character actor and select a character movement component. Let's set its speed at 1200. Now our character is running faster and more exciting. But now we have two long jumps. We can adjust the jump length by changing gravity scale parameter. And now we can't jump over the obstacle at all. Bummer. Let's increase our jump Z velocity. Now it's better. As you can see, we have a very short path in front of us. We can open our run character mode and increase the num of tiles variable. Now it's better. Also, we have another annoying problem. 
When we are moving in front of a high obstacle, the player's camera is making this zoom effect. That's because the player's camera spin arm component is colliding with an obstacle. We can fix this by setting the collision test parameter to false for this spring arm component. It's much better now. We have another problem with our obstacles. Sometimes we are blocked right from the start. That's because our player start actor is positioned right on the first floor tile with its obstacles. To fix this, we need to add a new floor mesh into our world like the one in a floor tile actor. Let's add a cube, change its scale and set the same material. And let's move it right behind the first spawned floor tile. And finally, we can move the player start a little back. Now we have some space and time to avoid our obstacles. And one more thing. Our obstacles are too grey. That's boring. Let's create a few materials for our obstacles. And let's apply these materials for our obstacles. Now it's still boring, but a little more colorful. That's all for now. I hope you liked this video and it will be helpful for you. Thanks for watching.